queen. Um, tell me about getting to where the Katya character moved from this senior project, and then oh. where did you go into oh, yeah. doing drag for real time at Videodrome and yeah, Jocks yeah, yeah. and all those type of places? Yeah. Well, um, I had this really cool teacher at Mass Art where I went to school, um, Dana Moser, and he brought me to uh, Jocks. And he introduced me to Aliza Shapiro, a.k.a. Haywood Wakefield, who um, ran a show at Jocks once a month called um, Trainee Rec. I don't know, probably that's not good to say now. But that um, was the title of it at the time. It was yeah, Trainee yeah, yeah. Rec, And right? it's also for, it's additionally problematic because I think there was a San Francisco Trainee Rec as well that we weren't affiliated. Anyways, um, yeah, and it was like, I just got to be like, to do what I want and be weird. I only did Russian songs. Everybody thought I was Russian and it was... Um, yeah, I was really obsessed with Russian language and Russian culture at the time. I go in like, I have like waves of obsession with certain topics, uh -huh. and I'm kind of over it. Um, although I still <laughs> like it, I'm just not obsessed. Right. Um, You're no longer playing your pronounce it perfectly cassette tape. Oh my God, you really, you, oh my God, he really does this research. I feel so flattered. <laughs> yeah, of um, course I do. Yeah, no. That was your tape that you got to get to tape. pronounce. Yeah. Cassette tape, yeah. Cassette tape that I wore out, like, you know, like I wore out the VHS tapes of the 2000 Olympics. Um, yeah, my TV spit them out. Wow. Yeah. Well, and um, yeah, it was, uh, it was like, yeah, I loved, but not anymore. Um, so then I, I got in that show and then I started like, then I learned I could do pretty drag because I looked a mess and um, up until like six months ago. And then, um, yeah, and it was just like kind of just one thing after the other and I started doing drag. I, at, the, at the time I was like also on like a parallel course towards the, the fiery pits of hell. Um, right. <laughs> you know, with the, the, you know, like the drugs and the stealing and the, um, it's just the drugs and the stealing, I guess. Drugs and the stealing. The uh -huh. lying, too. And the lying. Well, sometimes when you're on lots of drugs, it leads to stealing and Well, lying. you have to steal to get the drugs and get a lie about the stealing because then you right. get in trouble and you can't trouble. do the drugs. Yeah. Mm. And so. so where did that, so you, was that something that started in college? for fun and then yeah. got worse? Because you said in the past that you didn't just do a drink and have a bump. You would no, no. take a I wheelbarrow a of to, cocaine yeah. home Absolutely. and be gone for three weeks. Yeah, I'm not a, like a party girl. I don't, I've just never been interested, you know, mm. which is like weird to work in nightlife. But um, yeah, I just like, you know, I would, um, I wanted to use drugs to like, uh, live my life better, not mm. to like have a good time out at the discotheque or whatever. Right. Um, so yeah, so I got, a, it worked for a while, and then it stopped working as it, you know, it does. And it's, did yeah. it stop working because you moved from cocaine to crystal meth? Because that's always no, where I, everybody goes wrong. Yeah, it's hard. It's super hard to maintain like a like a, you know, vibrant, full, active life on crystal meth. Um, <laughs> well, at least, at least I mean, for me, for me, I'm not hours. you. No, just for me, just for me. I mean, uh -huh. you know, I know a woman named Barbara, and you know, she d passed on, but she did it really well. And um, obviously, she did. Now yeah. she's doing it in heaven. Uh, come to think of it, she died at 28. I wonder if that had anything to do with that. I'm not sure, um, but I think, what do you think, Lady Red? Crystal meth lead to death, perhaps? Oh! Or just like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but like, I would just like, you know, I just wanted, I think I boiled it down to the essence the other day. I was like, I just wanted to be happy all the time. Mm-hmm. That's it. And drugs was doing that for you at the time? Uh, yeah, I had like a, I had a, a formula in college anyways I would do. Um, speed, not crystal, like um, pills. Um, oh, yeah, so like diet pills or whatever. Yeah, or like, you know, the Black ADHD beauties. medication. Oh, yeah. ADHD. Uh, well, it wasn't in the 70s. Uh. Uh, so it was, uh, it was ADHD, uh, what is it? Ritalin. No, no, not Ritalin. Adderall? Adderall. Adderall. And then weed to uh -huh. get the creative juices flowing. Right. And then um, if I had to talk to people, I'd need to drink alcohol. Okay. So, um, yeah, speed, weed, and booze. Uh huh. That was like the magic bullet. Right? That was the thing. And then when did it depart into the darker land of um, hell, which is crystal meth? Yeah, because I think, you know, your body's like, this is great. How about a little more? You know, so right. you graduate. Um, and then, yeah, now it's tough to manage. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine you yeah. alone in your apartment smoking meth like for days, talking to the wall, Although I, talking I never... to the Russian Olympic team in your mind, talking to Barbara. Well, I want to dispel some commonly held like beliefs about like crystal meth abuse because the whole bug thing, the whole meth mouth thing, the whole like faces of meth thing is uh -huh. um, it's propaganda. I'm not condoning crystal meth use, but it is worth it to kind of clarify that um, yeah, those hard drugs are tough, like obviously. But the war on drugs, that whole campaign is part of the war on drugs, which is absolutely 
detrimental. Mm. Um, because I believe that drugs, um, drug abuse, and uh, all that stuff is a public health issue, not a law enforcement issue. And that's the way to really kind of like get that situation under control. And, you know, um, I don't know if it was in the 90s or I forget when the whole meth scare happened, but, um, you know, it was uh, like the government and I don't know if it was maybe this, I don't know, the CD, the, who was the, the DEA? The DEA, yes. They the usually don't look kindly upon yeah. crystal meth. But it's not like, but they really like railed against it and that doesn't, that doesn't prevent people from doing it, you know? That is true. I mean, look at my teeth. They do look gorgeous. I mean, they're wooden. I got, I got them after I quit doing drugs, but so like... So you didn't have your teeth drop out unless you bought those with your drag race money. Uh, no, no, they're real. They're oh, they real. Are. They I never gorgeous. had a cavity. Well, thank goodness. Yeah, 33 years old. So uh, basically your message is Katya, me crystal meth, not so bad. Not for me, but it could work <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. no. Not for me, but it could work for you. For all the message for Katya's young fans, Lady Red. No, but I think if I had, if I was the first lady, if I was Melania Trump, oh, I would. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> my platform would be, you know, people wouldn't take me seriously because I'm just a, a foreign supermodel, you know, who married a an old dirt bag with a fucking tumbleweed on his head. But <laughs> um, my platform would be the would be the reversing the war on drugs. Okay. Like public health issue. Mm. And like, you know, and also why are people in jail for like twenty years, like on, for drugs? I agree about That's that. That's crazy. That's crazy. And fucking legalize them already. God. Legalize them already. Maybe not all of them got you. No, all of them. Portugal did it, and they're doing fine. Yeah, <laughs> check out Portugal. Ah, Erica, ah, go get book a ticket on. to Portugal. Log on to the going. web and Google it. Seriously. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> right away. Like, but enough, like, but enough ah, about... Get to Portugal. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Um, and how did you get off the drugs? Well, I went to... Um, I Let's see, what did I do? And what was the moment that was like, all right, this is too much? <laughs> Well, you know, I was listening to um, Fresh Air, um, and there was this woman who was like a gutter um, heroin addict. Like, right. I mean, no, like, you know, eating out of the gutter for years and years. And, um, you know, Terry asked her if, like, there's a bottom, you know, it, you hit rock bottom and then you decide. And I think it's sort of different for everybody. Like, you know, um, it, sometimes people have several bottoms, and you just keep going until you're either you get well or you die. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So... Um, I ran out of money. That's a big one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you run out of money, what are you going to do? I wasn't, like, I wasn't, like, courageous enough to, like, go be a street hustler. I'm too, like, shy and right. I don't like people very much. So, I, um, yeah, I just ran out of money and I, my drug dealer ripped me off and, and just skipped town. So, I was like, okay, well, let's try to get sober. Mm. Yeah. So, I went to, like, um, AA, which I don't know if I can actually, I don't know if it's, like, ghost to talk about that. Um, but I'll say 12 step program and, um, that it helps like not for everybody, not right. for everybody, not for everybody, but it does help for a lot of people. Oh, and this is the, the, I've recently learned this. Um, I don't know if it's probably old news for most people who are like super into drugs or getting off of drugs, but, um, the opposite of, um, addiction is not sobriety. It's connection. <laughs> Mini applause for that. Let's no, 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 they're real connecting. They're, they're connecting. They're connecting. See I that? see that they are. Oh, so wonderful. <laughs> Do you need a helping hand? Because <laughs> she has two tiny ones yeah. for you. No, Just but in case. No, but that. And I don't want to like harp on this, but that was interesting because it's like when you're like a a gutter junkie. Oh, not necessarily whore, but just gutter junkie. Um, it's isolated, you're alone, you're just like, you know, and then the way out of that is like through people, you mm -hmm. know, like people who help you and they stay clean or sober by helping you. So it's actually um, one of the most common things you'll hear in 12-step um, meetings is that uh, if you ask for help, the person helping you is getting more help than you are, mm -hmm. which is cheesy, but it's actually true. So a lot of, a lot of cheesy things are true, which sucks because then people <laughs> don't want to hear them, but. But they're true. Like my toenails.
Toenails are cheap. Oh my God, they're gorgeous. Can we please get a close up on Gotcha's yeah. long toenails? Wait, flex it beautifully. Oh, hold on. Give it a good. There they are. Oh my goodness. Oh, rub them yeah. and caress them. If anybody's it's interested, in um, Bonnie, uh, she's at uh, Fantasy Nails on La Brea. Okay. And um, she, it's hard to get an appointment, but it's worth it. I guess it is. Yeah. It's Does worth she it. have tiny hands just like those? Oh no, her hands are huge. One <laughs> big hand. That's it. One big hand. So you got sober, and you how, how long was that before Drag Race started? It wasn't very long. It was like uh, maybe like a about a year and a couple of months. Okay. Yeah, and I mean before Drag Race, that w I was going you know super involved in um, you know recovery programs and like very connected, and so the isolation of Drag Race really like right. sent me immediately before we even started taping. Like, probably two hours I got into the hotel, after I got into the hotel. I was like, oh, oh God, what did I do? And, um, yeah, it was, like, really intense. Because you had auditioned four times before that, or it was, three times? It was at least four. It might have been, f I think it was four. It was, yeah, I, I didn't do season one, I didn't do season two, and I didn't do season five, so you figure it out. Okay, yeah. so other than that, the ones you did do were the other ones. Yeah, and I thought I was going to get into season six because, or no, I didn't think that, but... I had, my audition tape for season six was like, I never toot my own horn, but I'm, I'm gonna toot Avi's. Um, it was like The Godfather one, The Godfather two, <laughs> Citizen Kane, with a little bit of um, The Fly, a little bit of The Fly, plus um, Soap Dish minus the transphobic ending, and all condensed into like 12 minutes. I mean, it was like amazing. Can we get applause for that, just that description? I mean, uh, that's good. Big hand applause and tiny hand applause. <laughs> All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition because it's getting old. You're going to transition. So I I'm thank you for shouting out the transphobic ending of Soap Dish. <laughs> Which I forget about because I was mm. so, I've been such a fan of that movie, but I, of course I saw it when I was like, I don't know mm -hmm. how old, because I'm 33 now, you do the math. And it was like, uh, Milton Moorhead, really? Yeah. Like, you're going to... For a forced transition back, and then right. it was like literal, uh, like a, probably a trans person's hell. You're gonna force me back and make me do dinner theater in Florida? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Milton Moorhead from Syacet, Long Island. Hello. Awful. Awful. <laughs> I recently watched Adventures in Babysitting oh. and realized it's the most racist movie you've ever oh, seen in your oh, life. Nobody gets out of here without singing the blues. Yeah, it's terrible. Right, exactly. All those 90s movies are so problematic and it sucks. <laughs> you know, the 90s when racism and transphobia didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Except Rodney King happened. <laughs> Just take a moment on that. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. <sighs> <laughs> what did you say, Lady Red? I said, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so you get on Drag Race, yeah. finally. Yeah. You get to the hotel room. You have start having a panic attack. Well, not, Anxiety, not right away. Not right away. fun happens. Uh, I mean, it was like, I'll tell you this thing, and I completely stand by this. Um, if during the first day when we, all, when we had all walked in, um, if the producers had come in and said, we made a big mistake. We booked one too many queens. Does anybody want to go home? We're so sorry. We'll send you a fruit basket. Um, I would have volunteered. Wow. Yeah, I was just so, I was like, what am I doing here? I don't like, I don't like big personalities. I don't like drag queens. I don't know if I want to do drag anymore. This is like so, it's so overwhelming. I can't go to meetings. I can't like talk to anybody. Um, I flipped out. And also, even though she denies it, which now I'm starting to think, oh my God, maybe she's right. I swear to God, I thought I heard Violet say, as soon as I walked in, mm, I guess we needed a filler queen. I swear to God, I swear to God, yeah. I don't, but I don't, she denies it. She, she denies it. Of course she does. Now she's a winner. She could be no, nice. No, 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 no. She would tell me. She's like, she, she would be real with but me. But that was she's, the kind of, that was what you were feeling in your head at the time was like, it had never all occurred these bitches. To me. It had never occurred to me. And I'm on the fence as to whether Drag Race really casts like filler queens. I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I was like, what if they cast me to make fun of me? Like, what if they thought this, like, Russian character was so goofy and stupid, like, they're, like a watered-down Borat, that they're just gonna, like, show a little bit of it and then give me the boot? And I was like, I can't let that happen. Mm -hmm. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. And there's nobody you can talk to! Right. You can't call your friend and be like, should I wear this on the runway? I don't really know what to do. Right. Um, it was terrifying. Ugh. Ugh, these girls. 
They look like they're having so much fun, but they're dying inside. Right. <laughs> you should put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I mean, maybe they maybe they don't, they don't know it yet, and they won't admit it, but they're all dying. <laughs> or they will die. I mean, we all die. But. I mean, exactly. <laughs> Just more brightness and fun, Lady Red, with Katya. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will never die. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> So uh, it turns out, though, that all of your insecurities and everything really were kind of the key to showing yourself. I mean, that Michelle's always talking about being vulnerable, but really you connected with the audience in a big way because you really showed what you were going through, your true colors. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, people talk about the editing and all that stuff. Um, I'm fortunate at, like that, although many moments were embarrassing. Um, I was like, well, that's me. I mean, I don't know. Like, that's totally me they could have they couldn't have done me any more accurately uh-huh. um but yeah I, I was waiting for the critique of like uh, we need to see the fake you you're showing too much vulnerability <laughs> right. um, and um but of course the judges never saw anything of me because i never talked besides in the confessional uh-huh. so i mean i had a really good interviewer i i loved her she was like i i made her like my therapist you know they didn't have to probe for questions because right. <laughs> you had a lot to say I would, that she was would the be only like, person you could talk to uh, she would be like alright so set up this challenge it's, it's a new day in the workroom be like I hate myself and I hate life and my, my, you know it was so it was so bad wow I mean they had maybe not quite Laganja levels but <laughs> they had they had a lot to work with um, yeah oh so embarrassing <laughs> And you said you didn't come in with a game plan. When you got there, you kind no, of I, you I saw had, them. I had a couple of, like, because you never know who's going to be there. Right. And you never know what's going to be asked of you, so you don't know what to do. So I had, like, three different, like, you know, I had, like, uh, football, to use a football reference, maybe, uh-huh. um, plays. Um, you know, like, uh, we're going to go with, like, you know, Whiskey Tango Roger, or we're going to go with, like, you know, Beta Carotene, um, or we're going to go with, like, Delta Kappa Sigma, okay, which I believe is uh, football terminology. So they, um, <laughs> sure, sure, we'll go with that. But then I got in there, and they looked so good. I just threw out all the playbooks, and I just started to like internally melt. Mm. Yeah, oh, fame, oh, oh, she. <laughs> I looked. I was like, she was the only one that I had done research. Like, you know, you research who's going to be on the cast because right. they know like before you do, right? And um. And I was like, oh, God, I hope fame isn't there. I hope fame isn't there. And I go, and I, she's the first one I see, and I'm like... Then I saw the face tape, and I was like, oh, God, thank God, she's not perfect. But, like, um, <laughs> you know, but she had this attitude that was, like... This was, her, this was her attitude that first day. She was like, so this is my competition, and, um, but we can be friends if you want to. You know, it was like, wow. I'm going to win, but I'm nice, so, yeah, I'll talk to you. <laughs> right. I was like... Oh, it was so intimidating. Uh huh. It was so intimidating, and she was just like, "Ugh." But then, you know, it, everything changed because it's nothing is ever what it seems. Because everybody starts to lose their shit after a little while in the except Violet. Except Violet. Yeah. Except Violet. Young enough just, not to know better, just kept plowing through. Well, I would say like, you know, not human enough to have a heart. Okay. Um, <laughs> obviously that's not true because she's much more evil than you even think she is. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. She's just, she's fucking, ugh. Am I going to do look at her, please? You are. You'll, oh. At the end of the show, we'll do look at her. Don't worry. So you can really get into all of them oh, then there. I hope you all have those dishwashing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, somebody get me some dishwashing gloves. Hey. 